I'm kind of getting librarian vibes from this from this look. I think it's the glasses or like is it like the the puffy shoulders? I don't know what it is. Anyways, I feel I'm in the mood for a switch up. I hit the function, hit the rose right till I hiccup. I hit the stage and leave with money that's a stick up. She pushes the up. Thanks so much for clicking on this video. I mean, you voluntarily clicked on this video and I highly appreciate it. If you don't recognize my face and have never seen my face before, my name is Greta and I am a UX designer that really loves lifestyle and fashion and all that kind of stuff. But I've been really enjoying incorporating what I do as my job, UX design, into my videos, I feel like. You get to know me a little bit better. So I made a video recently. It's actually my very last video. So if you want to check it out, I'll leave it in the description box or whatever. Um, so I made a video talking about what my day-to-day -day looks like as a UX designer in quarantine. And just a little disclaimer, I am fairly new. I would say I'm like entry to mid-level at this point. So I'm not completely like completely completely new but I'm also definitely not an expert at this point but I'm getting there okay from my last video a couple of you were like can you please talk about how you transitioned into UX design I had some people like go out of their way to personally message me and be like hey you got to do this video okay so I feel like I have to do this video now and this is something that I was really interested in when I was getting into UX design so I'm very excited to give you kind of like the insider scoop as to how do you even go from having absolutely no experience and getting your first job in UX design so let's do it <music> If you clicked on this video you have an idea of what UX design is but if you don't know what it is UX design is user experience design and essentially there's different definitions of what it is but it is the process of creating positive and useful experiences for users now UX designers and also product designers which are quite similar they can create products that are physical like a coffee maker or digital products like an app or a website that kind of stuff users just someone who uses a product so you're a user because you use YouTube or you use Instagram you're a user of Instagram the UX designer or the product designer makes sure that these products are easy to use and they allow you to accomplish your goal so if your goal with a coffee maker is to make coffee a UX designer or product designer has to make sure that that coffee machine is super easy to use so that you can easily make coffee as a UX designer I focus on digital products so not necessarily physical products but that would be cool to look at in the future but right now I mainly deal with digital products like apps, websites, that kind of stuff. When I talk about my journey to UX, it's important to kind of backtrack to college. So I graduated in 2018 from Emory University here in Atlanta, and I studied psychology and French. So two very different things, but two things that I loved so much. It's great if you are younger, let's say you're in high school and you already know that I really want to do UX design. I really want to do product design. So it's really great if you can major in something like interaction design or computer science, which probably means that you can code too, which means that you're you're a unicorn if you're a UX designer that can also code they like to call you a unicorn because you're really special and you're very rare but it's not the end of the world if you don't psychology is a great field if you're looking to go into UX design because as a UX designer it's really good for you to know and understand people's behavior because you need to understand why people do what they do why people interact with the product the way they do for you to make it even better, for you to make that product even better. And what's interesting is that I was actually, during most of my time at Emory, I was actually pre-med. Um, and I, you know, I can argue that sciences are creative as much as people like to say that they're not, but I always felt like I was just neglecting a very creative part of me that just wanted to create. I used YouTube. That's honestly why I started my YouTube channel is because I was just like, man, 
all these physics classes, these biochemistry classes, I just want a creative outlet. But then I realized like, why don't I try to find something that combines my love for research, my love for things that are logical and analytical and also things that are creative. So that's where UX design came about. Okay, so once I decided, you know what, UX design, girl, I can do this, this is really cool. Once I had my heart more set on it, I had a decision to make. I was like, okay, now, how am I gonna get professional training? I can't, you know, just start applying to UX design jobs. I mean, maybe some people have done it before, I don't know. But I was like, I think I need some kind of training, some kind of education, and I had different options. So first of all, I could self-teach now. I don't know of many people who have completely self-taught themselves UX design. When you start applying for jobs, people like to see, recruiters or hiring managers like to see that you have some kind of like professional training. A second option you have is grad school. Now this one's obviously quite popular. Um, it's great because it's very like, you know, no one can deny grad school. Grad school, like you have to apply. You have to get in, you have to pass to get your degree, you get a full degree at the end. And obviously the drawback is that it can be so expensive and it can take a while. It can take like two years. I think that's like the average that I've seen. And there's different programs. Um, there's like Georgia Tech's uh, HCI program, Human Computer Interaction. There's, um, I think it's University of Michigan, HCI. It looks great. Grad school is awesome. It can just be really expensive and it takes two years on average is what I've seen. And then the last option uh, is a boot camp. So a boot camp essentially is kind of what it sounds like. It's like when you go um, like to a workout boot camp, it's like really, it's like a short uh, workout, but it's extremely intense. That's kind of what a boot camp is for UX design. And there's different ones like General Assembly, there's Springboard. I know Georgia Tech has a UX boot camp, UX UI boot camp. Uh, so obviously a boot camp is great because it's so much shorter. Uh, boot camps can be like three to four months, so very, very short, very quick. Um, it's cheaper, obviously it's less amount of time, so it's cheaper than grad school. It's like, I've seen like $15,000, $18,000. I'm not saying it's like super cheap, because girl. Also, boot camps are technically less of a risk, so grad school is kind of, it's a bigger commitment, so what if like halfway in you're like, crap, I don't like this, I don't know why I decided to do this. Um, it's, I think it's more of a risk to do and like put down all that money and all that time, all that commitment into grad school than a boot camp, because I mean at the end of the day a boot camp is only three to four months. It is still quite expensive, but it's not as much of a risk as grad school. And I chose, drum roll, I'm so dramatic. I chose to do a boot camp with General Assembly here in Atlanta. I did the user experience design immersive full-time program. <laughs> yeah. It was a three month intensive program with all UX design training. It's like over 500 hours of professional training and user experience design and it was intense. When they say boot camp, girl, they're not kidding. I'm not trying to freak you out. It's not like impossible. It wasn't like, you know, at the end of the day, I still feel like Emory was more intense, like my education at Emory, but this was intense because it was such a short amount of time and you had to, there was just so much to learn in three months because imagine like two year grad school program versus three to four months in a boot camp, and you're trying to get as much as you can in those three months, it was very intense. It was Monday to Friday, 9 a.m. to like 5 p.m. in class only, and then girl, don't forget about those projects. You have projects that lasted, you know, you were probably working until like late at night. You do have to pass all the projects for you to get the certificate at the end. And yeah, it was intense. 
In my specific boot camp at General Assembly, I was taught by one main instructor and then also an assistant instructor. Essentially, we had five different projects and the last project was like a real world client project, which was really cool. You can definitely add that on your portfolio because it technically, well, it really is real world work. Um, that was really hard to say. I'm pretty sure, uh, no, yeah, I'm like 100% sure that all the classes are remote, um, which is such a bummer because I they, uh, they actually offered you like an online version or an in-person version also you can choose between part-time or full-time I highly recommend to do full-time because it's just like I think it's definitely faster I think it takes longer to do the part-time as great as a boot camp can be there's definitely some drawbacks now I just want to put this in as a disclaimer and let you know about the real deal because it's only three months you really have to make sure that it's really up to you to learn more outside of the class because like I said, the class only teaches you so much and your instructors only teach you so much. If you just do the bare minimum, like nine, go to, go to class nine to five, that's it. I think it can be really challenging for you to find a job outside, like when you finish the boot camp after graduation. I've noticed people who just like really really went for it and put in the work outside of the class have done so much better so since I decided to go with a boot camp at General Assembly I want to talk about some things that are really important for you to do if you decide to go with a boot camp so the first thing has to do with your portfolio so if you're interested in UX design you probably have heard of this it's kind of like um, Pretty much anyone in a creative-ish field has a portfolio of some kind, like a photographer has their portfolio that showcases all their photographs, but UX designers, we have case studies. So these are just like showing your process of how you created a product, how you redesigned a product, whatever it may be, it just shows you like your process and your skill and all that kind of stuff. That's your time to shine, honey. Something else I want to mention about a boot camp that can be a little negative is that you risk looking like other boot camp graduates. So boot camp graduates are kind of easily detectable when you're applying for jobs because our portfolios tend to look very similar because we were taught the same way, we were taught the same things, and usually we had the same projects assigned to us and these projects are the ones that end up on our portfolio. So I highly, highly recommend once you're done with your um, with your boot camp because you probably won't have time during your boot camp, trust me, um, try to add in a project that is outside from your uh, from your boot camp a project that is not a school project because it's so much more interesting to recruiters or to hiring managers if you can talk about a project that you did not in school a project that is not like a concept design which means that it was just like a fun idea you weren't actually working with a business it was just something assigned to you that was graded so Yes, it's super important for you to add at least like one project on there that shows that you did work outside of the boot camp. And the second thing I want to talk about is network. Okay, I cannot talk about this enough. It is so important, like during your boot camp especially, to network because if you procrastinate and you don't network during your boot camp, you're gonna feel really behind when it comes to graduation and when you're ready, when you're starting to look for jobs because you're gonna be like, crap, like <laughs> I don't know anybody except for like the people in my class and obviously, most likely, they're not gonna be the ones who are gonna refer you because they're also looking for jobs. I use LinkedIn a lot. Girl, I even went as far as to get LinkedIn premium when I was broke. As a UX designer, it's really important for you to not just reach out to like current UX designers or current product designers. It's really good if you can reach out to people who are in like adjacent fields. So as a UX designer, you're going to be working with um, PMs, project or product managers. You're going to be working with software engineers. You're going to be working with marketing people. So it's really good if you have experience learning about these other people that you're going to be working with because something very big in UX design is collaboration. It's very important for you to know how to collaborate in a team because if you don't, that is like one huge red flag to a hiring manager 
or a recruiter if you can't collaborate in a team, especially in UX design. More than LinkedIn, honestly, the Meetup app. So if you've never heard of the Meetup app, it is so great. It essentially is just, it's a mobile app that has different interest groups on it and you can attend different events hosted by these different interest groups. So they have UX design specific interest groups. There's interest groups for like whatever you can think of. There's one for YouTubers. There's one for um, software engineers. I'm sure there's one, there's ones for like product managers or people in marketing. So this was awesome because I really loved meeting people on here. And so essentially you just go to these events and obviously because of COVID, you know, she's out here <laughs> preventing us from meeting people in person. So with that, all of the events have been virtual, which is actually kind of great because a lot of the meetup events that I couldn't go to before because they were like in San Francisco, California, or they were in New York, you know, obviously I couldn't travel there at the time, but now that all these events are virtual, you can essentially go to any meetup event that you want, which is great. Some of my favorite UX meetup groups in Atlanta specifically are UX Help there's UX research that one's really good uh, ladies who UX and it's either ladies who UX or ladies that UX that one's really good and then also Latinos in tech that one is very close to my heart of course but that's not just UX design specific that's pretty much anything in the tech world once you graduate once I graduated in December from my boot camp I was like yes i'm ready to get paid let's do this when i was like when i had my portfolio done and i was like so excited i was ready to put myself out there and like start interviewing covid hit a lot of the applications that i had saved or starred for entry-level positions in ux design had disappeared and i was freaking out because i was like shoot gonna do something I would recommend to you is don't be extremely picky when you're looking for your first UX design job outside of a boot camp because honestly at the end of the day any experience is experience it's better to say that you worked at a really tiny company even if it's not something you're really excited for even if it's not what you were envisioning for yourself it's better to have some experience than to be waiting around for months and months and months and months. When you're interviewing, especially as an entry-level designer, you really have to advocate for yourself. Honestly, if you can show them that you're so passionate and you're really willing to learn and you're excited to learn and you're really good at working with people, I think that you're just like, that's amazing as an entry level, of course, like, it changes once you become more senior level because UX tends to be a career where you transition from a different career unless you're you know someone who knew from the get-go that this is what they wanted to do and they studied it in college that's different but if you came from a different background it's really important for you to know and come up with your story like what is your story? How did you get into UX design? Why UX design out of all the different careers that you wanted to, that you could get into? And I think that's important no matter what career you get into because it's really important for people to know and for you to know, like, why did you choose this career? Like, that's super important. Um, but yeah, so I hope this was helpful. Drop down any questions that you have in the description. I am such like a YouTuber. YouTubers do this all the time. Feel free to DM me on Instagram or you can obviously leave a comment and I'll answer you guys. But yeah, thanks for watching. I hope this gave you some inspiration or encouraged you to take the leap of faith if you've been wanting to because I believe in you. But yeah, thanks for watching and I'll see you somewhere else, somewhere on the internet. <laughs> Bye!